I've featured quite a few of these dodgy death Dalek camping lights in the past. The ones that when you plug them into the mains to charge, the USB port becomes live at mains voltage as well, which isn't a very good feature. Unfortunately, there's a new kid in the block, and it's this dinky little one. It really is the new kid in the block. And uh, it lacks that feature of, uh, well, basically killing you. So that's quite a good start. But um, if you look at the eBay listing, there's another feature that is very good. Uh, it's usually, it's got the usual medley of uh, of words here. It says hot cob LED camping, hiking light, lamp flashlight, outdoor. Now, notable things, uh, it's not cob, it's not chip on board. It is just a one watt LED. But more importantly, it's, it says AA here, which means it takes AA batteries. And uh, that is a really major thing for something like this because most of them take AAAs. Uh, this one was only about $3.74. I'm um, not sure which set it was from because it's kind of, smudged off the side of the, the print here. It's not quite fitted on, so... Uh, but you can find them, you know, by using the sort of keywords, you can find these little things. So, it's got the same visual features. It's got the hanger that sort of goes up and it's got the pull-out bit. But it's quite an interesting thing. If you look at the LED at the end, it's the one watt chip uh, is in the reflector here. But as you pull it up, that disappears in, and that acts as a sort of general wash light inside here as well. It works very well. So let's get some batteries in this and I'll show you. So the base unscrews. And inside it's got one of these typical little three cell holders that goes in. So let's put some batteries in it. Let's use some inner loops. And this is the nice thing. It does take double A's as opposed to triple A's, which gives you a lot more uh, energy density in the same space. And talk about energy density. It's a friction fit. If you use the cells that are cheating the tolerance to cram capacity in, you may find it's really tight going. It's tight enough as it is. So when you put the base on, it uh, it's a wee bit footy to put on. It uh, sometimes goes in the wrong thread, but uh, that's all right. You can get it on. And it's just a simple switch on the side that turns the light on at the end. And then when you open it up, by swing swing these side bits out, uh, it lights the thing evenly, very evenly inside. It produces a good wash of light as well. So um, let's open it up and take a look inside. So I'll fold this down, uh, turn it off, unscrew the end again. And this is where it'd be nice if you could just pop the battery pack out, but you can't. You actually have to bang it off your hand to try and get it out. Notable uh, that it's not using one contact in this end and uh, one on the other end. It's using uh, the uh, two connections at one end. So let's open this up. It's got four screws in the base, which are quite short, but long enough to do their job. And with those out, this bit comes out. It's using a standard sort of Luxian star type LED with a resistor here, red, red, gold. That's 2.2 ohms. It's a quarter watt resistor. I wonder how well that's being, uh, I wonder what it's being driven at. The wires going up to the switch are actually going up next to the moving plastic core. I suppose ultimately, once this is in position, if that's pushed down, the wires are just, although it will be rubbing against and the wires are staying put, it's not moving the wires in any way. So that's reasonable enough. Um, what sort of current is it going to draw then? Let's uh, power up the bench power supply and hook it up to this. So there's the plus symbol. So let's put the plus on this end of the resistor because the other end is onto the LED. Uh, so it's glowing at 2.6 volts. Let's turn it up to, let's emulate nickel metal hydride cells of 3.6 volts. So that's 3.6 volts. It's drawing 140 milliamps at that. That's not bad. Uh, let's take it right up to the um, 4.5 that you get with a set, fresh set of alkalines. And the current is 300 milliamps on the button. So um, let's uh, work that out now, the dissipation across that uh, resistor and see if it's, uh, how it's going to fare. 2.2 uh, ohms, we can measure the, the 
Uh, actually, let me think, let me think, what's the best way to do this? The best thing to do this is to measure the voltage being dropped across that resistor. So let's bring in a meter with uh, crop clips on it, or alligator clips if you prefer. Uh, we'll set it to about 20 volt here. It's not going to be a very high voltage. It's probably going to be less than 1 volt. Uh, let's put this across here. Put this clip on here. Put the bench power supply, I'll wind it back up to the 4.5 volts. So that's it drawing about 300 milliamps. It's dropping 0.66 volts. So the dissipation from the resistor will be 0.66 volts times 0 0.3, 300 milliamps equals it's within its rating, well within its rating. It's going to be even less down at the... Uh, if I turn this down to the uh, 3.6 volts you'd expect from nickel metal hydride cells. Uh, so that's 3. Point, let's nudge this to 3.6. Um, it's 0.3, so at that it's drawing about 140 milliamps. So that will be uh, 0.14 times, was that 0.3? Oh, nothing, it's negligible. It's not, that resistor's not even going to get warm, so it's well within its rating. That's quite good. The construction of this is interesting. The circuit board, uh, there's a circuit board with the LED mounted on it. I'm guessing that's also going to do the contacts at the back, so let's whip that off as well. This is where a spring may fly out, because I know there's a wee spring inside for making contact to the end of the battery uh, holder. There's a spring and there's a center contact. It really is. The circuit board is just really being used to hold that in position. It? It's very simple. It's being used as a sort of mount for the LED and also uh, the just that single center contact with the spring. The slightly rusty spring, but that's probably because of the flux, the really corrosive flux they use with the lead-free solder um, where they've soldered the wire on. It's neat. It's a very neat little light indeed, it works very well. The, when you close this up, the LED lines up very accurately with the centre of the reflector here. It's pretty good. So uh, yes, it's not that expensive, it should have a very long runtime. What would the runtime be? If you used a, a set of good, say, 2 amp power, say, nickel metal hydride cells, so that would be 2,000 uh, milliamp power divided by, now what was it, it was 140 milliamps? 140... It's going to run for about 14 hours continuously before the intensity starts falling off. So it's actually quite a useful little light. Certainly it acts as a very focused beam out the front and then it's got that wash light out the side. And it's nice and simple and takes those chunky cells. So that is, that's a win all round. That's quite a nice little light indeed.